Hello everybody, I wanted to talk today about a game that kind of came out of nowhere but I'm really glad that it was released and I've been playing it a lot and I really love it. It's called Train Sim World, it's by a developer called Dovetail Games and it's the first time that uh, one of these developers' train simulations have been released on console I believe. So uh, they've been on PC for a while and it's quite infamous I guess, uh, the predecessor to this one, for having a lot of DLC, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, but yeah we are talking about Something like $6,000 worth of DLC has been released on that previous game, so uh, at the moment there's no DLC on the console version, but I guess you can ex assume that there will be, and we will talk about that a bit in the video. But I wanted to start by just saying how impressed I am by this game. It, the attention to detail is incredible. Uh, as the name suggests, your job is to really drive trains around and make sure they stick to a schedule. In the base game, you get three different train routes to play on. One is based in London, this is the one that I'm playing right now, uh, sorry England takes you through London. Another one is for a route in Germany and then a third one is for uh, the New York part of North America. And each of those has different trains that you can drive because the real world train networks have different trains as well. And each of those trains uh, controls significantly differently. So to the point where you do need to sit down and play through the tutorial for each train before you attempt to drive the route and uh, make sure that the trains are on time and all that kind of stuff. Your goal once you've got the sense of the trains, as I said, is to make sure that you stick to the timetable as closely as possible and get passengers to each of the stations on time. Now, of course, that's not necessarily easy. If you've ever used the train system in Australia, for example, in Sydney, you would know that trains can very easily get out of time and that just kind of snowballs from there until everybody's very late for their day and uh, commuters get very annoyed and stuff. You're not looking at riots if you don't do a good job in this game, but there's certainly... Um, I mean, the, the core the core gameplay mechanic, the core uh, challenge in Train Sim World is to make sure that you hit those platforms uh, on time each time and stick to the timetable, which is actually quite hard because the timetables are worked out down to the minute and you are going to spend time while you're playing this game literally counting seconds and hoping that uh, you've hit the right speeds at the right times to, in order to make sure that you get to that uh, destination on time. Um, you can get out of the trains as you can see here, you can wander around, you can see all the train uh, stations as they've been rendered and it's really impressive if you're the kind of person that does enjoy a train ride, especially on these kind of iconic routes, uh, you'll be quite impressed with how well they've rendered everything from the, the station design to the, the interiors of the trains themselves and all that kind of stuff. That's all very authentic and I guess that's where this game gets its value is in that authenticity and uh, attention to detail. None of it's particularly hard to do. Uh, while I did say you do need to do the tutorials, that's mostly to know where the various controls are. But once you've done that tutorial, it's only a five minute tutorial, if that. Once you've done that, you understand basically what you, everything you need to know to, to play the game. Which is good, it gets you in there and gets you playing straight away. And you can, like I said, you can jump off the train at any point, you can change trains, you can wander around platforms, um, you can even just go and sit in the um, in the passenger area and kind of watch the the route fly by so you can get do a bit of virtual tourism I guess. I'm also really impressed with how consistent it is and how uh, good of a job the developers have done in really rendering everything. Um, there's no loading screens from one train station to the next so if you do sit down with the goal to to run through the entire uh, route you can do that you can go through dozens of tra uh, platforms without a single loading screen which is which is always good and what you expect for a game that kind of aims to be authentic the only issue i guess i have with it on a technical level is how the um the track slats kind of pop in a little bit too close which is a little bit unfortunate it does take away from the immersion a little bit that you kind of seen the pop in that extreme and this has been played on playstation 4 pro so i don't even know what it's like on uh, other consoles but um i guess that's a, a compromise you need to make in order to to be able to you travel across across the entire route in a single game a uh, single attempt as such if you do crash, if you do not stick to the speed limits and all that kind of stuff, the scenario will be failed and you'll have to start again. Um, 
but again, it's not the most... It's not designed to be a stressful game. It's designed to be a game that's for people who really enjoy their trains and train travel and the challenge, I guess, of um, being a train driver. It's not a job that I think anybody would necessarily expect to, to make a video game out of, much less one that's really kind of compulsively enjoying like, uh, enjoyable like this one. But then again, people kind of said the same thing about farming and look at how many great farming simulators and are out there and how much people enjoy those. So there is certainly an appeal, I guess, to these kind of games that simulate jobs that perhaps, you know, um, we don't do in our day. <laughs> we don't do ourselves. Um, you know, it's not all of us get to get to be kind of hands on with these kinds of jobs. Those of us who work in front of computers and all of that, this is actually something of a, um, I, I guess, an escape or a bit of an adventure. Now, quickly, with regards to the DLC, as I mentioned, there is no DLC in this game at the moment, but you can assume that it's going to come because there is $6,000 worth of DLC in this game's predecessor on the PC. Uh, I don't know that obviously a lot of people are going to be quite critical of that. Um, the DLC is additional track lines and additional trains to drive on. To be honest, I don't mind it. To me, it kind of feels like uh, that same deal where you, you, you'll buy a... A rail train, a train set, um, and you will slowly build that up over time. You'll buy additional tracks, you'll buy additional bits of um, scenery and whatever. You'll build a big diorama. You'll buy the additional trains to put on the tracks and run it around. So a bit like that kind of physical train set that a lot of people really enjoy. Uh, this game is that kind of, uh, I guess, a virtual version of that, with the addition that you're actually actually able to sit in the train and drive it. But um, yeah, so I don't mind that the the DLC is there always probably going to be there if they add track lines from Japan for example or through parts of Europe um, some more parts of Europe or some more kind of exotic places I guess it'd be great to have a, uh, a simulation of some of the trains through that run through through uh, Central Europe for example or China or whatever um, those things are all completely optional of course there's enough in the base game to justify its price I think and those additional tracks looking at what it costs on PC are not unreasonable um, they seem to be about fifteen dollars or twenty dollars or thereabouts for an entire route and then each trains eight or nine dollars or something so you obviously would only pick the ones that you're personally interested in you're not going to go and buy six thousand dollars worth of train tracks but that doesn't mean that um, you're, you're missing out if you don't buy everything so yeah this is one of those examples I think where the DLC kind of makes sense in terms of the context of what the game developer is trying to do with the game and you know, once again, if you just buy the base package and you, you just want to train sim for a couple of routes, you get enough variety that you can really enjoy what is in this one, I guess. So, yeah, it's it's a surprise. I did not expect to enjoy it quite as much as I did, even though I do like the Japanese train sims. Um, and it's just nice to have this on console, and I, I'm sure I'll be spending a lot of time with this down the track as well. Look forward to my full review, which will also be on digitallydownloaded.net. But otherwise, thanks for watching, and hopefully, if you're a train fan, I've helped you discover this game. Thanks very much. See you next at the next video.